Lord, everyone. Welcome to Brighter Life Missionary Baptist Church, located at 1924 West 63rd Street in Chicago, Illinois, where David L. Sutton is our pastor. We are streaming live via Facebook and are excited to connect with you. Welcome visitors and thank you for joining us. It is our prayer that you are uplifted today during worship and may your life never be the same because God is good. Announcements, Sunday, June 21st, 2020. Today is Father's Day and on behalf of our pastor, Dr. David L. Sutton, Happy Father's Day, men. In lieu of following COVID-19 precautionary measures, all on-site services and meetings are canceled until further notice. To stay abreast of our current guidelines concerning COVID-19, go to chicago.gov slash coronavirus. Bread of Life Church is exercising faith over fear through wisdom. Thus, we are conducting Sunday school, worship service, and all Bible study classes on Facebook Live and via conference call. Adult Sunday school participants, please dial 213-493-0606, then enter access code 595-844-4. Four five five at 9 a.m. each Sunday and use the same conference call information for Sunday morning 1050 a.m. worship service and on Wednesdays for 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Bible study. Youth Sunday School class, please dial 224-501-3400 one two then enter access code two five two five eight eight five one seven at 9 a.m. each Sunday worship service is streamed each Sunday at 10 50 a.m. via Facebook live on the bread of life page tithing and giving options are available by texting B O L Chicago to 77977 on your cell phone or online at pushpay.com. You may also send your tithes and offering to the church via U.S. mail to Bread of Life, 1924 West 63rd Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60636. If you have a prayer request, or wish to join the church, dial 773-778-4121. If you are worshiping with us via Facebook Live, please share the service with family and friends and share your prayer request in the comment section of the Bread of Life's Facebook page. Bread of Life's annual Women's Day is Sunday, June 28th. That's next Sunday. Our guest speaker is Minister Valerie Houston of New Beginnings Church in Chicago, Illinois. This year's theme and scripture is Conquer Your Giant, coming from Romans 8.37, which reads, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Excited to have you guys next Sunday. Man. Black Church Life Conference will be conducted virtually this year from July 20th through July 24th. To register for the free conference, go to www.lifeway.com slash blackchurchlife. For further details, contact Judy Hambrick at 312-287 0320. It is now time for our tithes and offering. The Bible says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Honor the Lord with thy wealth and with the first fruits 
of all your crops. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offering. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there be, may be meat in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Give, and it will be given back to you. Press down, shake it together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. For God loves a cheerful giver. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Do you know what today is? It's Father's Day. So what I like to do is just for a moment just try to say some words of encouragement to all of our fathers out there. Just to know that we love you, we support you. Come on, even right now, if you're watching via Facebook, go ahead and just wish them a happy Father's Day. Go ahead, go ahead and post it right now. Come on, post those clapping hands and, and praying hands and, and, and hands of praise as we just celebrate our men on today. Just have a few words just to try to encourage you. So just as God has formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils and man, he became a living soul. You see, men, you were made in the image and likeness of God, God himself. And men, as you reflect the image of God, you as fathers have the same responsibility what am I saying? You have the same responsibility of forming and shaping our sons and our daughters and breathing into them so they can live as well, just like the Heavenly Father did in the garden. Fathers, you have purpose by design. God was intentional concerning you. You have an essential, irreplaceable, often imitated, never duplicated role in our families. No one can do what you can do. I know right now we're protesting and we say, I know black lives matter, but guess what? If no one told you, fathers matter. You're valuable. God handpicked you. He made you the head. God chose you to lead. And if you don't lead, we're lost. If you're not in position, we're at a disadvantage. We don't want to take you for granted and just in case you may feel tolerated and not celebrated, let me pause right now just to say thank you. Thanks for coming to the games. Come on. Thanks for lifting our hands in victory. Thanks for lifting our head in defeat. Thanks for loving us. Thanks for protecting us. Thanks for your sacrifice. Come on, I know it wasn't always easy. You know, some of you got baby mama drama, but guess what? Thank you for being persistent. Thank you for humbling yourself. Thank you for dropping your pride. Thank you for never giving up. Thank you for fighting for your family, my, your family. We honor you. We salute you. We say happy Father's Day. And for those fathers who may be out of fellowship or even disconnected, we encourage you on today. We pray the spirit of reconciliation in your life. It's not too late. Every day that we wake up with breath in our body, God has given us another chance to get right on today what we didn't on yesterday. So we pray for restoration between relationships between fathers and sons, between fathers and daughters. Come on, you are necessary. We need you. And again, we salute you. You're great. You're mighty. 
Happy Father's Day. God bless you. You are perfect in all
is coming from John 3, 16. And it reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The subject this morning is how deep is your love? How deep is your love? Small but large in stature is a four letter word called love. Dictionary.com defines love as an intense feeling of deep affection. Although it is intangible, meaning we cannot physically touch it, most, if not all of us, have experienced love in some shape, form, or fashion. Love is also immeasurable because it hasn't any seams. There is no other emotion that drives us to do the things that we do as much as love does. Thousands of songs have been written about love. A man and a woman marry in love. We are passionate about the people we love and go to great lengths to prove it. In fact, we do some crazy things in the name of love. If there were time, I would share some things that I have done. However, there's not enough film on Chris's video camera to justly tell it all. Now, I am not a subject matter expert on love. But I believe it isn't as complicated as we make it out to be, since Jesus is our model. When we follow his example, the world is a better place to live. If you will pray with me this morning, post the word praying in the comment section of Bread of Life's Facebook page, then give God some praise because even in the midst of this pandemic, love still abides and the Lord is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah for the Lamb of God. John 3.16 is a standing invitation from love himself who is God extended to whoever believes in him will have everlasting life encompassed in love. His ultimate gift to believers in Christ is to spend eternity with him in the place called heaven. Is there anybody listening this morning that want to have a never-ending relationship with our divine Father. With that said, there are three truths about the Father's love that I want to share with you today. And the first truth is, God's love is sacrificial. We are obligated to love everybody unselfishly. Therefore, we must die to the flesh so that the spirit leads us to love. John 15 verse 12 says, This is my commandment, that ye love one another even as I have loved you. As our example, Jesus did it. So can we. The world is a better place when we love everybody as the Father commands. Will you pray with me this morning? To love sacrificially calls for us 
to transform our thinking so everyone can experience God. There should be no length we as believers are not willing to go to within the confines of the Holy Scriptures to demonstrate God's love. Our affection for Him and others should be as intense as His love is for us. Sacrificial love also entails giving up something for the sake of a better cause. Here in the text, God sacrificed his one and only son that you and I might have life and that more abundantly. What are you willing to sacrifice unto God in exchange for the wonderful gift of eternal life? What sacrifice, people of God, are you inclined to make for Jesus Christ who died in your place? Parents, are you willing to sacrifice your children to prove your love? I think not. Now that does not warrant you to do that. God would not warrant you to do that. However, the scripture speaks to the intensity of God's love that can win anybody over. Are you praying with me, church? When we look at the world today, it is evident that our love for God is not deep enough and in turn the love we have for one another is shallow. How so evangelists? Well, prisons are overflowing with young people who have been neglected and the number continues to rise. Slavery was abolished in 1863 yet 150 years later in 2020 racism still plagues the country because some folks prefer hatred over love. The rich are getting richer and the poor poorer and the political arena. Well, you know what? Let's not go there today. I simply do not want to waste precious time on such a topic. It is disappointing to say Earth is becoming an undesirable place to live because we are growing farther and farther and farther and farther away from God. God's love is uniquely attractive and it transforms. Our hearts should be so saturated in love that hate just cannot exist. Mark 12 verse 30, and I paraphrase, commands us to love our neighbors, the people we know and don't know, the folks who are difficult to love, those we like, and those that dislike us. And yes, even our enemies, regardless of skin color, social status, personal, cultural, or religious beliefs. Jesus made the sacrifice. He made the sacrifice. Have you? Can you? Will you? Make the sacrifice? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. How deep is your love? Note, if it can be measured, it is time to go deeper. So let's recap. 
God's love is sacrificial. And the second truth is, God's love is unconditional. Agape, as it is officially called, is love that is Christ-like. It is affection absent of restrictions and stipulations. Agape surpasses Eros, the romantic love, and Filio, which is brotherly love. God's unconditional love defies all barriers because it warrants uncommon action. Do you remember the account in John 4 and 4 where Jesus, a Jew, on his way from Judea to Galilee, decided not to walk around Samaria as others Jews have done to avoid going through Samaria. He decided on that particular day to walk through Samaria. He decided that today the barriers must be broken because my father has sent me to restore his people back to a place in him. So he decided to walk through Samaria, which as I said was forbidden because Jews and Samaritans, <laughs> They just do not interact because they just don't like each other. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Even 2,000 plus years after Jesus died, you still have races and nationalities of people who don't like each other. But even so, he sits down at the well because he's tired to get a drink of water. And here comes the Samaritan woman to draw some water from the well. And Jesus asks her for some water. But to make a long story short, even though she found herself at the well, at the heat of the day, because this was a woman who was trying to avoid the gossipers because everybody in town knew that she had been with five men and that the one she was with was not the man for her. However, Jesus indulged her in the conversation. He loved on her. He didn't judge her like we would do. He looked past the fact that racial tensions existed between the two nationalities because he came not to condemn the world. But Jesus came to save and to forgive. That's what unconditional love does, church. That's what it looks like on display. To the utmost, Jesus saves. To the utmost, Jesus saves. He will pick you up and turn you around. Hallelujah, Jesus saves. The account goes on to say that after he identified who he was, and help her to identify who she really is. The woman went on to be probably one of the greatest evangelists that ever existed because there was a need for him to go through Samaria. There was a need for him to break the barriers. And do you know to go around Samaria? It calls you to do more, to walk more steps, to, 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 to do more energy. It costs more energy than 
you walk to Galilee, it takes more time to walk around than just to walk there through it. However, love needed to stop by. The world's way is if you love me, then I love you. But Luke 6 verse 32 says, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. However, God's standard is I love you, period. Everybody deserves to be loved unconditionally, whether you agree or disagree. So today, people of God, I challenge each of you, myself included, to remove those conditions and love freely, even though I can't see you. I feel your hesitation. But God says, forget that you've been rejected. Jesus Christ was rejected. Let go of that hurt. Release that bitterness. Denounce fear so you can be free to love all people. I want to set some people free today. Because whom the Son set free is free indeed. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God's love is unconditional. Note, if your love is full of conditions, it is time to unpack and go deeper. How deep is your love? Let's recap. Number one, God's love is sacrificial. Number two, God's love is unconditional. And our third and final truth is God's love is relational. He genuinely desires to connect with each of you. The Lord's only agenda is to sincerely interact with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. He wants to give you his undivided attention in return for yours. To be in relationship with the Father is divine. The love that he has for his creation is second to none. There is no love like the love of the Father. Now, I need you to put your spiritual glasses on and look closely at John 3.16. Jesus demonstrates the same intense love for his father that his father has for him and us. The father and son's love for one another is so deep that his son sacrificed his life in our place. I need to say that again. Jesus demonstrates the same intense love for his father that his father has for his son, Jesus. The father and the son's love for one another is so deep that the son sacrifices the, the father. Set the example for his son that his son loves his father so much that he's willing to do what the father would do for you sons and daughters of the most high God do you have the same love for the father that he has for you haven't we been adopted into the royal family of the most high God John 15 and 13 says, greater love hath no man than this, 
that a man would lay down his life for his friend. We <laughs> are God's friends. I said we are God's friends. Now that's covenant relationship. Love that is relational. So much so that God would consider the royal diadem, the sovereign one, the holy God, the good shepherd, that he would consider little old me his friend. How deep is your love? Is it as deep as the Father's? Is it as deep as the sons? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God's love is sacrificial. His love is unconditional. His love is relational. The depth of the Grand Canyon is 7,000 feet deep. God's love is deeper than that. How deep is your love? The Kelly Kandaki Gorge is 27,000 feet deep. love is deeper than that. How deep is your love? The Pacific Ocean is 36,000 feet deep. God's love still is deeper than that. How deep is your love? Is it deep enough within you to be a living sacrifice? For God, every day, come what may. How deep is your love? Can you withstand false accusations from others who blatantly lie on you and to your face? How deep is your love? Do you honestly forgive the Judas Iscariots in your life that have betrayed you time and time again? How about loving folks who do not love you. How deep is your love, people of God? If God asked you to sacrifice your life, would you do it without reservation? How deep is your love? If it is conditional, then it's time to go deeper. How much does it cost you to love? If it's nothing, then it's time to go deeper.
that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. How deep is your love? Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we praise your name for your love today. been for you loving us just as much as the Father. You would never have come and given your life in place of ours. We can never repay you for what you did for us out on top of Golgotha's hill at the place called Calvary. But Lord, we can tell you as much as we can say that we love you so much. That you love us so much. And that you first loved us. And that you love us unconditionally. That you transcended barriers across all nationalities. That because of your love, couples who thought about divorce decided not to, that because of your love, people who were not getting along, friends not getting along, decided to make up, that because of your love, those who have fallen by the wayside returned unto you like the prodigal son, because of your love, Jesus. I can't say how many times I contemplated suicide because of your love that kept me from taking my life. Hallelujah! 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 Bless the name of Jesus. And you have so much love that it goes around everybody to cover all of us at the same time. So there's never any reason for us to ever feel unloved. Who wouldn't serve a God like you? Who wouldn't praise the God of the universe? Who wouldn't want to have an eternal relationship with God, the Divine Father, who saved us from destruction. And so God, as we close this prayer, thank you for your word. Thank you for the seeds that you've sown. Thank you, Lord God, for whoever is listening that may feel like they're not loved today or loved enough now that they know that there is one who loves them beyond measure that you are the one that loved them it doesn't matter what they have done where they are in you father that you would love all of them oh god and let them know that you would like to have a loving, lasting, eternal relationship with them. That you would like to make their hearts your humble abode. As we are extending the invitation to discipleship. We never want to take for granted that someone listening or watching are believers in Christ. And so with that said, you might be wondering, well, what must I do to be saved? All you have to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised his son Jesus from the dead and you shall be saved. I tell you it is the most important decision that you'll ever make in life. Don't wait till tomorrow. Make the decision today to live a life anew with him. Don't let his dying be in vain. 
He's waiting for you. And we are waiting to welcome you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It is now prayer time. It's prayer time. And as always, we quote the words of the Bible where it states that if two or three are gathered together in my name, Jesus says, I am in the midst. Again, it's prayer time. So right now we say that if you have prayer requests, go ahead and submit your prayer request. Uh, you should see the question uh, coming up. Um, if you don't see that, if you have not had an opportunity to do so, go ahead and just post your prayer request. Uh, we just want to touch and agree and be with one accord in the spirit of prayer. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, our Father, we come before you right now just to say thanks. Father, right now we say thank you for your grace and we say thank you for your mercy. We say thank you for all the wonderful things that you do on our behalf, God. So undeservingly, God, Father, we know we uh, were unworthy, God, but you look beyond all of our faults and you still continue to meet our needs. You still love in spite of. God, we say thank you right now for loving us, God. Father, thank you for showing us uh, and demonstrating what love really looks like. It, the Bible says, greater love have no man than he that would give up his life for a friend. God, we thank you, God, for, for dying for us, God. We thank you, God, for sacrificing your only son, Father. You loved us so much you gave, Lord. And so, Father, right now, we pray, Lord, that we will follow that example. We will follow that, that methodology, God, that when we love, it, it, you're showing us it requires action, God. We pray, Lord, that we, we go beyond lip service, God, but that we begin to walk it out, that we begin to uh, see it manifest in our lives, that we won't just talk the talk, but we will walk the walk, God. Father, we pray, Lord, that uh, you would just show us our own hearts, God. Father, we, as we examine ourselves, God, Father, some of our loves have been shallow, God. Father, right now, we pray, Lord, that you would begin to stretch us, God, that you begin to uh, break down barriers, uh, break down our, our prejudices, God. Father, that some of us uh, are, are, are holding grudges, God, and we have unforgiveness so we can't love, God. It's getting in the way, Father. It's causing a, 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 a divide, God. Right now, we pray, Lord, that you would just free us, God, on today, God. Father, teach us how to love. Show us how to love, God. Father, draw us deeper, God. Father, your word says if we draw nigh to you, you will draw nigh to us. And God, right now, we're reaching for you right now. We're, 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 we're pulling for you, God. We're, 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 we're going beyond our, our, our normal level, God. Father, we pray right now, God, that you would uh, just begin to teach us, God. Father, show us, God. Father, show us what we need to do, God. Show us what adjustments need to be made. Father, right now, uh, what the world needs is love, God. Father, what the world really needs is love. So, Father, right now, Father, let us be first, God. Father, let us uh, lead the way, Father. Let us be the example, God. Father, we pray right now, God, that uh, we know it's challenging, God. Father, we know it's not easy, Father, because some, some, sometimes we're not lovable. We Sometimes we're not easy to love, God. But, Father, we pray, Lord, that those who have been uh, partakers of your grace, Lord, and your mercy, Father, that we would show grace and that we would show mercy, Father. Father, that we would be long-suffering, God. Father, that we won't get tired, God. We won't just love on today, God, and then tomorrow we're done with you. But Father, when we begin to walk with one another, Lord, that we begin to disciple one another, that we begin to really care in the name of Jesus. Father, right now, we pray for those who may be ill, Father. We pray, God, that your healing power will begin to move, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Father, we pray, Lord, uh, that you would touch, Lord, just touch by your power, God. Touched by your spirit, God. Father.
Father, someone feels all alone right now, Father. We pray your spirit will be with them right now. In the name of Jesus, let them feel your presence, God. Let them feel your, 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 your anointing, God. Father, we pray for those who uh, may be without jobs. We pray, Lord, that you begin to open doors, God. Father, when one door shuts, Father, we know that you can open another, Father. You're the God of uh, of, 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 of possibilities, God, Father. Anything is possible with you. You is there anything too hard for God? Father, and that answer is no, God. So, Father, right now we pray for the word that went forth on today. We pray, Lord, that uh, it penetrated hearts, Father, that people were receptive, God, and that they would be responsive as well to what we heard God on today. Father, we forever give your name the glory, the praise, and the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray this prayer with thanksgiving. Amen.